Once you know that, how to create a functional component in React, let's take a look at what is JSX. JSX is a syntax extension of JavaScript. React recommends using JSX because JSX is more powerful than HTML. JSX may remind you of a template language, but it comes with full power of JavaScript. JSX is just like HTML, but comes with more power. So let's take a look at why JSX is more powerful than HTML. In the previous lecture, we understand how we can access the variable values using JSX. But how does JSX do that? When you create JSX element, it will something look like a simple HTML element. But React consider this statement as JavaScript. React will convert this statement into JavaScript and create a node element. React has a special method called create element to create HTML elements using JavaScript. There is nothing special about this method. It will just take first parameter element, the second is going to be the element argument, and the third is the text of the element. If you want, you can create your HTML element using this method as well, but it will take you a lot of time to create a simple UI. So instead of using this method of React, we're going to use JSX. And React will do the heavy lifting for us. Now the ability to store JSX element in the variable and use JavaScript with curly braces makes JSX more powerful. Now let's take a look at a very simple example of React documentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back to my project and here you can notice I have a simple functional component user. Here inside this div, I'm going to specify class to this div. I'm going to specify class name, app. And then inside this div, here I'm going to create h2 heading tag. And inside it, I'm going to specify a time, the current time. Just down here, just after this export default statement, here I'm going to create a new function. This is just a JavaScript function. So I'm going to start with the function keyword, then specify name to this function, which is tick. And inside it, inside this function, I'm going to simply create a variable constant. And in the parenthesis, right here, just like this, I'm going to create h2 heading tag and then specify it is. And in the curly braces, as I said, in this curly braces, you can access the JavaScript variables or you can call here JavaScript expressions. So inside this curly braces, I'm going to create a new object. So I'm going to say here new, call the date class with parenthesis. And then I'm going to specify dot to local time string. So this statement will return the current time to this element. And just down here, I'm going to call a react dom render method. So if I want to access that render method, I need to first import it. So just up here, I'm going to say import and then specify react dom from and, and here I'm going to call react dom package. So now using this react dom, I can access the render method of react. So just down here, I'm going to say react dom dot render and inside it, I'm going to first render the element. And then here I'm going to say document dot get element by ID and inside it I'm going to specify my root element. That's it. Just out of that let me just call this function inside my component. So when I call this component it will automatically call this tick function. So what I'm going to do is instead of this time I'm going to get rid of this time and pass curly braces here. So inside this curly braces here I'm going to say set interval and specify tick function to it. And after every one second, I want to execute this tick function. So I'm going to pass here 1000. So this function is going to execute this tick function after every one second. Let me just save the changes and back to the index file and save this as well. As you can see, I'm going to have my current time as a result. So this statement is going to execute this tick function after every one second. You can notice in this function, we use here react dom render method. Most React applications only call React Dome render method once. When we start learning state, I will show you how you can update the element without React Dome render method. We'll look at that later in this course. So when you inspect this page, then you can notice in the body, React will update only this child element. On every tick, we get the updated value. When you inspect this, you will see React Dome compares the element and its children to the previous one and only applies the DOM updates necessarily. So even though we create an element describing the whole UI tree on every take, only the text node those contents have changed gets updated by React DOM. So you can notice here only the node or you can say only the text is updating. Now you can notice how useful the JSX is when you want to create a React component. In the previous lecture, we use here export default to export this component. Now if you want, you can use this export default before this function as well instead of adding this new line. So instead of adding this new line, here you can add export 
and just get rid of this export statement. So you can notice how easy it is to create this functional component using this export default statement before this function name. Now as you know, we install React extension in Visual Studio Code Editor. Let me show you how you can use that extension to create this functional component. So just after this functional component, I'm going to say React functional component. So I'm going to say RFC and when I press enter, you can notice this will easily create the React component with just one click. This snippet is going to import the React, then export the default function user and return a simple division type. Instead of creating the whole component, you just need to start with this JSX. So this is how we can use the React extension. Now I hope you understand how to create JSX in React. We'll look at more about JSX in the future lectures. But just for now, next we're going to understand how to create a class component in React.